guys welcome to this channel soulmate pharma today's topic of discussion is pharmaceutical regulatory bodies so when laws are made then these laws are required to be maintained properly and to maintain the law so to provide some strict action so that laws are never been the rules are never been broken certain regulatory bodies are they are available worldwide so different countries have different regulatory bodies which protect the healthcare which safeguard the healthcare laws regarding related to the patient safety which are also known as health authorities so different countries have different health authorities as well different there are some international health authorities as well to safeguard the health laws so that import or export of medications or if any problems arises with a particular company drug then required actions can be taken so everything is supervised controlled or monitored by these health authorities So, a regulatory agency or regulatory body is a government authority which is responsible for exercising autonomous domination over some areas of human activity in a licensing and regulatory capacity. They are customarily set up to strengthen safety and standards and or to protect the public federal from unethical business conduct in markets where there is a lack of effective competition or the potential of the undue exercise of monopoly. So, the everything regarding the controlling the price of medications, whether medications or proper medications, non-tempered medications are being delivered to the patient's party or the consumer. So, everything is taken care by these regulatory authorities. So, it avoids the unethical business. Health authorities means the government authorities which administer health laws in any country. They fulfill important, important government roles for protecting and assuring the health of the public. So, here we will see various country wise regulatory or health authorities, their roles, their reporting system how do they report the adverse event how do they collect the adverse event issues and this topic is very important actually but especially this topic can be boring but at the same time this topic is very fruitful the name of the regulatory authorities the country wise regulatory authorities their name their year of establishment and their reporting system these things are very important and these are asked in interviews as well so fda this is the logo of fda and fda is the regulatory authority of usa which was first in founded in 1906 in a, the area maryland so u.s food and drug administration is an agency of the united states department of health and human services one of the United States Federal Executive Department. It was founded in the year 1906 and FDA is responsible for protecting and promoting public health through the regulation and supervision of food safety, tobacco products, dietary supplements, prescription and over-the-counter pharmaceutical drugs. So, FDA is not responsible for drug-related adverse events only but they are also involved in supervising the food safety tobacco product and dietary supplement related issues as well vaccines biopharmaceuticals blood distributions medical devices electromagnetic radiations emitting devices etc so it has wide scope wide range of scope 
and veterinary products. It has its headquarters at Maryland, USA, and it consists of nine centers and offices. So, MedWatch. MedWatch forms are used by the US FDA health authority systems for regulating the adverse events. The MedWatch systems collects report of adverse reaction and quality problems. All type of clinical and spontaneous reports and special scenarios like lack of effect, pregnancy, medication errors, everything you can report in Metro MedWatch form. So, MedWatch forms are of two types made was from 300 form 3500 this form is used by healthcare professional consumers and patients who report voluntarily and 3500b it is a modified version of 3500 and it is more customer friendly so it's same likewise it is almost similar to 300 3500 and this is used by health the volunteer for voluntary reporting by healthcare professional consumers and patients that means if voluntarily if you want to report to the regulatory authority then you can report it through these forms and if you are reporting directly to the regulatory authority by means of medwatch form then it is known as active reporting whereas if you are reporting to the marketing authorization holders followed by the image reporting to the regulatory authority then it will be known as passive reporting from 3500A is mandatory reporting for use by IND reporters, IND means investigation new drug reporters, manufacturers, distributors, importers, user facility personnel. So those who have reporting obligations means solicited reports and that which come from the end of manufacturer wholesaler, those are reported, those they use. 3500 form and there are various means of reporting it's not necessary that if you report voluntarily then you have to report through medwatch form only you can also report it through online fax telephone through other means as well tobacco e-cigarettes or wrapping Report problems or adverse event, health events and tobacco product problems to include problems with e-cigarettes, also known as VAPs, e-liquids, heated tobacco products, cigarette, little cigar pipes, water pipes, also known as hookah, chewing tobacco, snap or snaps. So all the tobacco products, this category of tobacco products can be reported through safety reporting portal. So for this, it was from is not applicable but you have to report to the site you have to go first first of all you have to go to the fda site and report to the their safety reporting portal and for vaccine related issue again made was from is not applicable you have to use VAERS form which is also available in fda portal vaccine adverse event reporting system form to report problems with animal drugs, devices or foods, including pet foods, report a problem to the Center for Veterinary Medicine. So for animal products or animal issues, animal drug related everything, you need to report to the Center for Veterinary Medicine. Another portal is there in FDA site. So different forms are available and by mistakenly, if you are reporting this tobacco related or vaccinated issues through medwatch form then your form would not be cancelled but it will be directed to the correct one that means they will direct you to the correct form to report and next moving to Medwatch forms. So you can see these are two of the Medwatch forms. The forms at the left hand side is for voluntary reporting. This is known as form 3500. So at the top you can see it's written for voluntary reporting of adverse event, product problems, and product use. This kind of Medwatch form can be used. So I have to fill up the detailed required information. This is form FDA 3500A. Whereas to the at the right side, the form is MedWatch Form 3500A. It is for mandatory reporting by the importers, distributors, manufacturers. 
so the forms are more or less same actually they look they are look alike almost now there are departments of fda so fda has various departments CDR, CBR, CDRH. The full forms are again important. CDR refers to the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, which is mainly concerned with safe and effective the drug related regulations so that safe and effective drug reaches to the market and the patients. And Center for Biologic Evaluation and Research, that is CBR. They regulates the biological products for human use. That means vaccines, sera, anti sera, blood products, toxoids, etc. And next comes CDR, that is Center for Device and Radiological Health. The, they ensure that public health is protected and promoted, and all device related issues device and radio emitting devices are handled by the cdrh so next comes ema that is european medicines agency so as the name suggests this is for the european union countries the country the european union areas there are a lot of countries in the european Union and they use this common European Medicine Agency as the regulatory authority. So, a decentralized agency in Europe, which was known as European Agency for Evaluation of Medicinal Products from 1995 to 2004, and after 2004, it was renamed as CMA. So, again, I am saying the full forms, the dates are important. The country was regulatory authority, these are why these are asked in interview. Of PV. The goals are pro goals are to provide independent science-based recommendations on the quality, safety, and efficacy of medicines, medicines, and on more general issues relevant to public and animal health that involve medicines. Scientific evaluation of application for European marketing authorization for medicinal products, stimulating innovation and research in the pharmaceutical sector. So the rules of all the regulatory authorities are more or less same. So, there is no much significant difference in their roles actually. So, next comes the European Intervigilance System. This is the reporting form or the reporting system used in European countries. The Intervigilance System was launched in December 2021 and the full form of Intervigilance is European Union Drug Regulatory Authorities Pharmacovigilance. And it deals with the electronic exchange of ICSRs, early detection of possible safety signals from marketing drugs, monitoring and evaluation of potential safety issues, continuous monitoring and evaluation of potential safety issues. So, intravigilance are of two types, EVCTM and UVPM. So, as the name suggests, it's intravigilance clinical trial module, which facilitates the electronic reporting of suspect unexpected serious adverse reactions. So it is mainly involved in looking after the clinical trial cases. So any unexpected serious adverse reactions, which are known as SUSARs, that means the reaction is suspected and it is unexpected. That means it has not occurred before. No prior experience exists. For that particular drug and the part and serious the event is serious adverse reaction so they deal with this those unexpected serious adverse events which are suspected as well as which are involved in clinical trial and EVPM that is intravigilance post-marketing module so drugs once they go to the market they are available in the market and if any adverse events occurs 
then which are reported adverse events are reported by the patients or the different consumers or healthcare professionals in icsr forms mainly pharmacovigilance professional they receive icsr forms where using which they just process the cases in database fetch the important information from that icsr forms and process those cases in database so icsr form is nothing but this is act as it acts as a source document for fetching the important informations relating to adverse events or adverse drug reactions so intravigilance post authorization module this one is designed for post authorization means once the drug is available in the market then this epvpm comes to action next comes is mhra again so medicines and healthcare products regulatory agency so this is the logo of mhra and what happens in and this is applicable for Euro, uk countries means united kingdom so again uk is a part of europe but they have separate regulatory agency not ema they use mhra the medicines and healthcare products regulatory agency is the government agency from the united kingdom which is in europe which is responsible for ensuring that medicines and medical devices work and are acceptably safe it was formed on april 2003 with the merger of the medicines control agency and the medical device agency so again the functions are same the role includes protecting public health regulations promoting public health by helping people understand the benefits and risks of product use improving public health by supporting innovation and the development of medicines and medical devices providing authorities information operating a successful integrated business so nothing much but they are involved in just promoting and protecting the public health creating awareness collecting adverse drug reaction report and take necessary measures accordingly so all the regulatory authorities have more or less same functions so this one is the reporting form with and they ne it is known as yellow card so it was formed in 1964 this yellow card was launched in 1964 you can see the format the informations which they seek actually they more or less they seek same information as Actually, relating to adverse event, the name of the reporter, the patient name, etc., etc., only, and these pharmacists are encouraged to display poster on your log card for the patient who report adverse drug reactions and advise how to report. So they they continuously promote or encourage people to report in UK. so and mhr provides yellow card to patients so with information on reporting and here also patient hcp anybody can report voluntarily as we have seen in the case of medwatch and you drug vigilance as well now this is the logo for Ministry of Health, Labour and Welfare (MHLW). So this is the regulatory authority, healthcare authority of Japan. One of the cabinet level ministries which provides regulations on maximum residues limits for agriculture, chemicals in foods, basic food and drug regulations, standards for foods, food additives, etc. So MHLW is not involved associated with drug related regulations only, but they are also focused. in agricultural chemicals basic food related informations food related regulations as well so so the drug regulations are controlled by pmd but final approval is given by mhlw so mhlw they have set pmd a pharmaceutical medical device agency in japan which they specifically look up to this drug regulations and they just report those regulations to mhlw and final approval is given by mhlw only but pmda was constructed since mhlw was 
has lot of other roles as well so pmda was developed to look after the drug related issues mainly institute for safe medicinal practice is a national confidential form which is used by the mhlw this is is a national confidential medication area reporting system that distributes hazard alerts and other medication safety information so ismp is their reporting form so again i am saying the full forms are reported the name of the regulatory authorities country security authorities as well as the reporting forms are important now pharmacovigilance program of india so now moving to india so in india basically there are two things national pharmacovigilance program nppv was inaugurated on 23rd november 2004 at new delhi this program is coordinated as central drug standard control organization office so you can report it through national pharmacovigilance program also you can report to national pharmacovigilance program in india but also there is another way and widely used way pharmacovigilance program of india pharmacovigilance program of india which is widely used nowadays which is coordinated at national coordination center indian pharmacopoeia commission gaziabad they collect data analyze it and use it to reference to recommend information regulatory intervention besides communicating risks to healthcare professionals and the public so there are two ways of reporting either you can go with this npvp program which is coordinated by the cdsco or you can go to the pvpi program which is coordinated at the indian pharmacopoeia commission gaziabad earlier pvpi was coordinated by the aims all indian institute of medical science but later on it was shifted to indian pharmacopoeia commission gaziabad and they are now like okay, taking care of this reporting so this day in india we use sat form or suspected adverse drug reaction reporting form so i have so these are the two of suspect adverse drug reaction reporting from the left one is for the cdsco control suspect drug adverse reaction form and the right one is the ipc control set form so the informations you can see these are almost same means it's almost everything is same more or less so you can choose any of this so if you choose this one then it will go to the cds you have to go to the cds so if you choose this one then you have to take the help of ipc it will be coordinated or regulated by ipc so now moving to the various international agencies so the first of all the wide well known international agency is ICH this is the logo of ICH the international conference on harmonization of technical requirements for registration of pharmaceuticals for human use this is the full form of ICH <laughs> it is used in a unique project that brings together the regulatory authorities of european japan and usa so this was said by by european japan and usa they just combinedly as a joint venture they say this ICH program and other experts from the pharmaceutical industry in the three region to discuss scientific and technical aspects of product registration it was formed in the year april 1990 first april 1990 so it has ICH has four categories quality safety efficacy multidisciplinary so quality means chemical and pharmaceutical quality assurance stability testing impurity testing etc so under this quality guidelines guidelines for stability testing impurity testing etc protocols are there while safety deals with the in vitro and in vivo preclinical studies so any sort of preclinical studies if exist that means carcinogenicity testing genotoxicity testing these are controlled 
uh, under these are being monitored under safety guidelines and efficacy guidelines include guidelines relating to the clinical studies in human subjects that means dose response study good clinical practice etc whereas multidisciplinary includes miscellaneous types cross-cutting topics which do not fit uniquely into the above three categories that means it includes medra estri ctd m3 ms these things so we pharmacovigilance professional they just follow this efficacy guidelines actually we deal with efficacy guidelines it's our scope so again efficacy guidelines if you consider there are six guidelines sub guidelines sub categories under efficacy protocol the first one is e2a guideline which deals with the expected clinical safety reporting then comes e2b r3 guidelines data elements which needs to be transferred to the icsr then e2c that which is r2 guidelines periodic benefit risk evaluation report earlier it was known as periodic safety update report now it is known as PEBRAD or periodic benefit risk evaluation report so again it comes post marketing expedited reporting standard e2d guidelines then e2e guidelines pharmacovigilance planning and e2f guidelines development safety update report so again these are also important the different guidelines of e2 guidelines so the name of these guidelines are important for interview purpose and these things paper then periodic safety update report dscr dot development safety update report we will cover in our some other topics in our topics of aggregate reporting we will just come to know what are these things now next comes Uppsala monitoring center this is another international agency which was set up in collaboration with who so who or world health organization set up a program in 1978 which is carried out by Uppsala monitoring center in sweden so they use reporting system as vgbase vgbase database for icsr is used for oops, reporting which is the large it is one of the largest database and vgbs is related to who art then medra medic which we use who icd who drug dictionary vgbs is linked to this only not only associated with icsa reporting but vgbs are also associated with medra who's icd who that it means entire coding also is taken care of vgbs so this is a huge database actually with huge capacity so their functions include coordinating the who program for international drug monitoring collecting accessing and communicating information for member countries about the benefits harm effectiveness and risk of drugs collaborating with member countries in development and practice of pharmacovigilance altering regulatory authorities of member countries about potential drug safety problems via who via the who signal process so again the functions are almost same you can remember remember the general function of a health authority which will be same for each and every health authorities so the important thing over here is again the name of the regulatory authorities the year of establishments there are reporting systems then comes seoms so this is another international agency the council for international organization of medical sciences is an international non-governmental non-profit organization which was established jointly by who and unesco in the year 1949 so it was established jointly by unesco and who the objectives are to facilitate and promote international activities 
in the field of biomedical sciences to maintain collaboration, collaborative reactions with the United Nations to serve the scientific interests of the international biomedical community in general. So again, CIOMS have different working groups which you can just visit and see the internet if you wish. CIOMS 1, 5, 6, 7, there are different, different working groups and they look at different functions of CIOMS. So these are some of the other country-wise regulatory authorities or local regulatory authorities. So for Australia, Therapeutic Good Administration, which is also known as TGA. For Canada, it's Health Canada. For Brazil, it's Anvisa. For Singapore, it's Health Science Authority. For Hong Kong, it's Department of Health Pharmaceutical Science. And France, it's National Security Agency of Medicines and Health Products. And for China, it's China FDA. So again, I am saying in this discussion, in this here, the topics which the things which you need to remember or memorize is the name of the regulatory authorities, the country's regulatory authorities, their year of establishments, their general functions of each of the regulatory authorities, general of the common function, and their reporting system or the reporting form they use actually. So these things you need to remember for the purpose of interview. And thank you for listening. So that's all for today. And if you have like this video this presentation then please like share and subscribe and share the evidence of the same to get the certificate thank you have a nice day and bye bye